peace to the saints. I wanted to take out this time while the world is dressing up in strange costumes and celebrating a pagan and or demonic holiday uh, to speak to you about the broken woman uh, because the broken woman is a character that we're going to see increasingly in this society that we're in. And sometimes, not in the case of Princella, but sometimes the broken woman will have a beautiful face, she'll have a lovely shape, and it will entice us to want to build a relationship with her. We might even be fooled into procreating with her. But as she is indeed broken, we must understand that not all things that are broken can be fixed. There are those who experience trauma and wallow in it for the rest of their entire lives. You all have probably experienced a broken woman and may not have been fully aware of what you were dealing with, for they have many masks that they put on to cover over their trauma, their baggage, the things that they fail to deal with. And rather than accept what is and move past it, they start to create these stories. Huh? In the case of Princella, the story has led to great levels of misandry, hatred of men. So we know that she's been abused. I actually have some footage that was shared with me that's going to take us deeper into her psychology. And the funny thing is you can tell that I have unique insight because when I had that conversation with Princella, I stated during that video call with her, I said, you have been victim of abuse. And she never replied to that. She never denied it. She didn't confirm it. But we often know that if someone says something about you that's untrue, surely you're going to speak against it. Say, no, that's not right. That's not true. That's not real. But she didn't say anything against it because it is true. And I knew that because I've encountered many of these women who are broken, huh? broken, never to be healed again. But what's worse, worse than her being broken is her spreading that to others. And what's worse than her being broken is causing others to wallow in their despair and to form deep hatred for men, not for the individual man that may have harmed them, but for all men. Let's go ahead and look into it. We're going to dive into her psychology. So take this journey with me. May I acknowledge those who support the work and let us start with our tradition. Show love to those who show love to you. Shout out to Javier, sends intuition by a cash app. Shout out to Johnny, sends intuition by a cash app. Truly appreciate it for this late night uh, stream. I was out with a good friend of mine I went to Johns Hopkins with. He's now a physician, another friend who's a plastic surgeon now, and they're here in the city. And so, you know, went out, took him out for a lovely dinner, and then uh, went to a show, saw the Theo Vaughn show, which was actually quite entertaining. Now let's go ahead and get into this. Oh, and do confirm that the audio is good. And remember, there are things that I say that you might not entirely understand initially, but over time you will. Sometimes I simplify things such that everyone can understand them. We already have the measure of IQ, but we also need the measure of SQ, sanity quotient, sanity. You know, we find sometimes that, and, you know, really it should be sanity and subjectivity. Huh? Yes, we find that some people are intelligent, some people can comprehend. However, their intelligence is adversely affected by their lack of sanity, or their intelligence is adversely affected by their lack of objectivity, meaning they are subjective. They are prone to emotionalism. They are prone to you know, allowing their feelings to get in the way of being reasonable or rational. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Shout out to the real ones. There we go. Now the audio should be coming through the uh, correct mic. All right, 
right, so do confirm that you're hearing the audio through the proper microphone now. As you can see, I've been uh, working on the studio. We got another video switcher. We got uh, more cameras, better cameras. Appreciate that. Now, I'm actually changing this one manually right now, and I'm dolo in the studio. It's uh, <laughs> it's basically the middle of the night. You know, I'm just uh, checking all my angles, getting ready to, for Sunday service, you dig, so that you guys can see the audience when they're speaking. And you can switch back to a boss, you dig, and get some angles out here. So, you know, yeah, I'm actually changing this manually right now. Thank you for asking. So I've made huge investments in, in you all, in this audience, and in this movement. And we must because... Boy, we are under attack. And when I say we, I'm talking about people who are sane. I'm talking about good people. I'm talking about men. I'm talking about the family itself. I'm talking about civilization. Shout out to MMIA, writes, peace to the saints. Keep spreading the truth, sir. Yes, sir. And shout out to the saints around uh, Saint City. I was just, as I said, um, at the Theo Vaughn show when I was exiting out with my people. You know, a gentleman came up to me, said, peace to the saints. You're the saint in the center. I was like, absolutely. He's like, hey, man, good to see you. And, you know, it's all love. Shout out to Hinnon Cooper, supporting by a cash app as well. Truly appreciate you. And I'll drop the banner on the bottom for those who would like to uh, support the work via uh, PayPal. Uh, shout out to Illosophical. Appreciate you, saying. Okay. Audio is good. Fantastic. All right. Now let's work. So this is an interview. I don't know who this uh, fellow is. Um, I'm going to try not to say anything critical about him. Uh, and then you see Princella on the right, uh, Prince Fella. And uh, this individual is you know, quite a curious face. You see that they have like a very uh, strong brow, brow bone. It protrudes a bit. You see mine is quite smooth and hers is more like a, a, what's the, a Neanderthal. Hers is more like a Neanderthal. So you tend to look primitive when you have a strong protruding brow bone. You look primitive, more masculine with that brow bone. So, you know, admittedly, you know, she definitely looks more masculine than me with her bone face. You dig? And she also got some braces. So shout out to her. It's always nice to see people wanting to improve, although cosmetics are not the most important thing in life. But she is trying to fix that, that uh, you know, dental issue that she has over there. Again, she's wearing the wig. I'd love to see her loving herself, you see. That's a pity to have someone who purports to be a leader, but they actually don't love themselves. She's also wearing colored contacts. Even though she attacks whites with, you know, just sickening levels of racism, she also tries to emulate the whites. And also let us not forget that clearly she has some white blood in her, right? Uh, she, she's not the blackest black person I've seen. So it's quite strange. And it just shows the, the poison and hatred inside of this person's mind. Let none of you be uh, one who suffers hatred. That, that's that's a sickness, you see. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and hear about what has happened to Princella and let us better understand the psychology of the broken woman such that we can spot them in our life and avoid them. You might say, Mark, can we not help them? No, it's not possible. You cannot re-raise someone. As much as my heart goes out to these people and I, I wish they were better, there's some women that I deal with that are gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous, beautifully shaped long full body in their hair gorgeous faces super crazy super crazy and i know that there's really nothing i can deal with them because they're broken and they cannot be fixed you know living in your feminine and know knew what time it was early on or was well that this guy we know is a weirdo any grown man who says living in your feminine or you know a man is masculine a woman is feminine. When we have this language of like, oh, he's in his feminine, he's in his masculine, this is silliness. And this goes into the leftist manipulation of language, which moves us farther away from truth as we change the definition of words. In addition, it suggests that you know we're all just fluid beings that float back and forth in between identities, which is not the case. When a female is displaying traits that are chiefly of the male she is dysfunctional she is not in her masculine she is dysfunctional when a woman says oh if i would be with a real man or a masculine man then i can be feminine no you are dysfunctional and you're lying to yourself and you're blaming others you're not taking accountability we've never heard a man say well if i was with a real woman then i'd be masculine until then 
I'm going to be uh, a fi- an effeminate guy until I meet a woman who's feminine. I'm just going to take that role. No, it doesn't make any sense. Well, well, nobody knows really anything as they're young. You know, right. we can kind of have a sense, but, you know, life shapes you. So, sure. you know, I've been a tomboy my entire life since I was a kid. Right. Okay. So I came out. So one thing we always have to question is, is that true and or why is that? So when the individual states that they've been a tomboy their whole life, the, the natural question is, well, well, why, dear? Why have you been a tomboy your whole life? I mean, why? is that appear to be a natural state for you. And you also have to consider, well, why hasn't she questioned it? And let us also ask ourselves, does this fellow who has the word wisdom on his name, and I have a sense that he's devoid of wisdom, is he going to push back on her? Is he going to ask her any hard questions? Is he going to provoke her thought? Is he going to drive her to greater introspection, self-examination, self-reflection? I highly doubt it. Uh, shout out to St. White. He writes, I wonder if Princella also got an A in biology. I bet she claimed that she did. <laughs> I bet she would accident- absolutely claim she did. She tends to speak very well of herself while having accomplished very little. Wanting to play football and um, play with the little army men. And, right. and, you know, my mom used to put me on dresses and I couldn't stand it. I, I couldn't stand it. because now, I want you guys to track her story. You see, she's speaking of her mother, which would suggest that she was in a household with her mother. She's also going to speak of her father, which would su- suggest that she was in a household with her father. Then she'll speak of her grandmother and how her grandmother did her wrong. Well, was she in a household with her grandmother? We just need to try to track her story to see how much of it actually makes sense. Shout out to Ramses and co. He writes, the new setup is fire. Shout out to the warrior king of this YouTube thing. Thanks for cultivating the minds of men, making them upright and promotion, promoting discernment. I appreciate that. And we shall continue. Because I used to want to go racing and i couldn't go racing running races with a skirt on so you know it used to be you know it just you know so um my mom she she had this idea of me being she had an idealized fantasy of her children being picture perfect so she wanted me to be a cheerleader and she wanted my brother to be a football player that now is that an idea of your children being picture perfect or is that simply going along with the norms of the society Now, we've always viewed the athlete to be a desirable state for any man. That's just a component of what we would hope our boys would be, athletic, which is to say healthy, strong, and also to have reasonable intellect. Every parent promotes good grades. So she's suggesting that that's something unusual, which is not the case. And then she says, mother wanted me to be a cheerleader. Well, you know, that's the analog of the football player. And so all this is suggesting is that her mother is a normal American woman. That's all that's suggesting that that's nothing unusual. You know what I mean? And it didn't turn out like that because I was the one I was active. And so they always used to say that. One thing you have to be suspicious of is when, when individuals state, they used to say, or people said, no, nah, no, nah, love. Who exactly? Can you quote someone? Can you can you name a name? Uh, typically, people will refrain from naming names because if they were to name a real name, that person could say, hey, hey, I didn't say that. And so we make these claims of they said or people said uh, this is hearsay. This is invention. I don't believe her. I should have been the boy and he should have been the girl. And so here she is creating a narrative. She hasn't said my grandmother used to say she did not state my mother used to say she didn't know my father used to say. Right. And those would be the persons most qualified, those who are close to her, those who observe her on a regular basis. And probably the reason she didn't say that is because those individuals might check her for lying. So she says people used to say, hmm. Kids, you know, just based on our active level, you know. Um, so for me, and I find that to be a strange concept just because you were an active female, people said you should have been a boy. I've never heard that in life. I used to be a sixth grade teacher, I observed many young ladies who were very active and 
you know, physical, but I never thought you should be a boy. I only thought you're a girl who is very active or you have a lot of energy or you're a very physical individual, but never did I think that the genders needed to be reassigned. And that's not a natural instinct of anyone to state, especially in her case, because we must remember she's very old. She's like 40 something. So in that era, when she was a child, this is not a normal thought that would come across the minds of an average black American, especially not in the South, which is where she's from. Huh? This active power person, I've yeah. always been. I've always been this person. Now she's lying. Now I want you guys to track her lies. She just stated this active power person first off no woman is powerful no woman is powerful women have areas of expertise women have areas of competence but no woman is powerful this is not something that is true to the female existence it's just not the case um further she says i've always been this active power person now power you can get in a number of ways now, power usually is going to be something that allows you to have influence over others, makes others yield to you, right? So remember she said that. Let us track the many lies and inconsistencies. Always been. Mm -hmm. So were you in high, what were you like in high school? Shy and quiet. <laughs> the lie has already been exposed. She's exposing herself. She said, I've always been this active power person. Then he says, well, what were you like in high school? And then she says, shy and quiet. We've already heard her expose herself, shy and quiet. And I believe that because she's a weirdo, you see. So a weirdo has to hang back lest they be in the sense, they don't want to have more attention on them because they're a weirdo and they don't want to be attacked. And so they, they hang back. And I believe that because she's not attractive and ugly people are dangerous because they never get the positive attention or the respect or the regard that they seek. And then they go into their minds and try to find ways to get that acclaim, to get that attention that they can't get in the natural means for those who were blessed with attractiveness, charm, and grace. And especially for a female, let us all acknowledge that the female has an obsession with the physical appearance. We observe this in the usage of makeup and all of these other things, tools to appear more attractive. The female is obsessed with their appearance. And when you are a female growing up who is not viewed as attractive and also appears masculine just from a biological standpoint, um, then you're really going to have that deficit. You're going to almost have a hole in your heart, you know, because you didn't have the guys looking at you, being attracted to you, pursuing you. And that's a complex that she's grown up with. And these persons with this complex are always trying to get this chip off of their shoulder, or rather they're always walking around with a chip on their shoulder. Right. I got picked on a lot. I got bullied in elementary. Now think about how much she's, she told a lie. She said, I got picked on a lot. I got bullied in elementary and high school. So how can you state that you're the active power person while also saying that you are shy, quiet, got picked on and bullied a lot? That doesn't add up at all. You see, what she's trying to do is portray herself as someone who's a natural born leader. You never hear me say things like I got picked on or bullied. That's just a lie. It was not the case. Conversely, you'll hear me say things like I love when people try to get off a joke on me because I was never the kid that was made fun of. In fact, when we were cracking jokes back and forth, people would look me up and down and be like, and couldn't think of anything to say. They look me up and down. Bruh, bruh's dressed clean. Bruh know how to talk that talk. You know. Bro, good looking. At the time, I had the waves dipping. No, I, I was I was always at the top of the food chain, and it's apparent. But then you have liars like this, and they try to pretend they they they're revisionist. They're revisionist. They're creating history today. Elementary school, middle school, and high school. Damn, right? she says she got bullied in elementary school, middle school, and high school. God, that's like every year. Hold on, uh, listen to her. I, what were you like in high school? Shy and quiet, right? I got picked on a lot. I got bullied in elementary school, middle school, and high school, and right? God, uh, I look like a... I look that's everything. So you got picked on the whole way through, which probably because of your appearance, which is bad still to this day. 
<laughs> and also because there was something dark in you and, and people attack weakness sadly man is not noble and so humankind attacks weakness rather than trying to help they attack it i don't say attack it but you know i don't either suggest that you support cowards how's it going boss <laughs> sounds okay I'm here. what's yeah i am live right now oh no shit Okay. You're definitely drunk. Okay. I appreciate that. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, 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 for sure. I got the I the door open, folks, because it's hot. It is hot. Okay, here's my card. Hey, you get home safe, my friend. Yeah, yeah. All right, boss. Okay. You know, we're, we're connecting with the community here. We're connecting with the community, which is uh, all a part of my plan. That's why I put the headquarters in a place with high foot traffic. We're going to have Sunday service. Um, it'll be, of course, first and foremost, open to the members. So if you're a member, you can actually attend Sunday service in person. So it's on all the member sites. Uh, you RSVP, we'll send you the address. You can come on down to headquarters. It'll be a great time. You, you don't want to miss it. Carrying on. Look like a kid. You know, okay. And I was very focused on my education. I In high school, I joined. I was in ROTC. Mm -hmm. They wanted me By to the run. way, uh, no disrespect to anybody who's in ROTC, but I don't know what kind of school you went to, but in my school in L.A., in the ghetto, in the ghetto, uh, if you were in ROTC, you were a turbo nerd. You heard me? You were a rule follower. You were not a winner. You did. You were not a winner. Now, some young men, they know they want to be military men. They go into ROTC. That makes perfect sense. But in the context of a super hood high school, ah, you about to get made fun of. Um, so if you're a female, especially going into ROTC, like this is comparable to like the, the, the butch girls who become police officers, right? We see shorty in the ROTC. We like, oh, we, we know what kind of broad this is. So yeah, she for sure was not a winner. Shout out to Privy Landscaping comes in by cash app, writes piece of the saints. Appreciate your leadership and guidance. Thank you very much. And I really just cannot underscore enough the importance of us being unified and being strong because we're in a war. You might not realize it, but I promise you, <laughs> St. White, he, he said, he said all the ROTC people were hella weird. Bruh, I thought it was just in the hood. I guess it's, it's universal. Cross country, but um, I chose not to run cross country, but instead I joined ROTC and I was a part of the uh, rifle team. Okay. You know, shout out to her for like mentioning every single thing things she's done in life trying to scrape together some accomplishments from a life of very little meaning she's like i was a part of the rifle team it's like shorty like nobody cares yeah and i got an award i got like first place national award for winning a martin luther king speech contest but i've never mentioned that before because it's largely irrelevant and nobody cares and it's not worth mentioning within the context of other towering accomplishments i have this girl is telling you, like, now when I was in the third grade, I won the, the, you know, it's like, shorty, please. You sound like Al Bundy talking about his high school football glory days. The drill team mm -hmm. and uh, PT team. I joined third. No, right. it, wasn't, it wasn't a PT team. It was the, uh, it was right. Like, good. She is an ugly right. booger, man. Yeah. I think that's it. And so, um, Look at them fake contact lenses. And you know a person is really a plastic human being when they would cover over something that is called the window to the soul. Yes, the eyes. The eyes are called the windows to the soul. And they cover over the eyes with something false and man-made that blocks everything. You cannot see the window into the soul. I also played basketball, and okay. that's when I started rapping. I really started rapping a lot in high school. So, okay. um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm learning. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. yeah, I do a lot. I do some of everything. There's nothing that I can't do, but I was so focused on education. You know, Did I, Shorty say there's nothing that I can't do? 
uh, how about um, getting a bachelor's degree within the normal amount of time, which is supposed to be a four-year allotment. I did mine in three years, but yeah, four years will be standard. You took like over a decade. You still don't have your bachelor's degree, but you can do everything. Come on now. And this kind of self, this delusion and this self-aggrandizement, what could we call this other than narcissism? There's nothing we could call this other than narcissism. And one thing you must be aware of is that the female, you know, we have narcissistic males. We have arrogant males. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but the female really just brings it to the level of artistry. You see, not every female is narcissistic, but you will never look at a man's profile on Instagram and see a bunch of photos of himself, like selfies. You, you won't see that. With women, you can see that on a regular basis, and it's so common that we accept it, which is to say we don't ridicule them. We don't think that they're weird. We just think that they're women. They're very much so invested in their own self-image, their own beauty. And the narcissism and the insular nature of the female is, is such that you know, when they pleasure themselves, they don't even really need to have the thought of a man. When they use masturbatory power tools, electrical devices, the electrical devices do not mimic the movements or feelings of a male phallus or the male body. So they're literally just in their own head, you know, using these overstimulating technologies. It's all about them. There's no thought of human connection. It is quite sick and sad. But anyways, you know, let's look back at this ugly rascal. And here's the strange thing. This is, this is how you know these people are suffering mentally because they can't see their own contradiction. It, there's no level of self-awareness, right? Like, for example, she's claiming to be a tomboy while wearing a wig. Okay. If you're so masculine, why are you wearing a wig? If you're so masculine, why did you take out the time to pluck your eyebrows? If you're so masculine, uh, why did you take out the time to get braces? Like, for example, I had perfect teeth naturally. I had a dental accident. I could have had my teeth repaired. The dentist said, oh, we can do this. We can add this here to repair your teeth to what they were before your dental accident. I said, ah, I ain't really tripping. I'm good. Ah, I didn't care enough. Here she is with braces, eyebrow plugs, a wig, hat, and color contact lenses. Oh, you're not a tomboy, love. I've never seen a, a, a tomboy try to do all of these things to enhance their beauty. That's not the male nature. That's not the masculine thing to do. I used to go, I was the one that was tearing up backpacks because I used to carry like these heavy books in my backpack. Right. You know, and I used nice to. That's at the bottom. Yeah, I used to do research papers for money. I remember I wrote I wrote six research papers on the same subject. <laughs> mm. I wrote mine and five other ones, right? Uh, right? I used to charge people for that. Now she's lying again. This woman is a teller of tall tales. You could not even get a bachelor's degree. You're like 40 years old and you still don't have a bachelor's. You did not write papers for other people. You can barely speak English. You did not write papers for other people unless you were in a remedial school and everyone's uh, everyone was ESL and English was their second language. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. By the way, there's some uh, broken black women in the chat or maybe some broken white women. There's just broken women in general. And I welcome you to come on and expose yourself. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. And the reason that we're having this talk is because there's increasing numbers of broken women. And, you know, broken women today are even more dangerous. And I'll tell you why. Because they can put the machinery of government behind them and then exercise violence among sane people and exercise violence among good people. These broken women, why are they broken? Various reasons. Abuse. They were victim of RAPE. Many, many different reasons they are broken. Uh, neglect. A single mom who had to work three jobs and let the iPad raise them or let the television raise them or, you know, left them at grandma's house and grandma was senile. There are many reasons that they're broken. But one thing that is for certain is that they will not be unbroken. They will remain broken. And also they will remain disgruntled and angry and unhappy. And generally all these types can do is spread their pain. That's all they can do. And so really we have to neutralize them and marginalize them and silence them. Uh, Reckley writes, thoughts on religions overall, net positive or negative? I think religion is a net positive However, generally, when you hear people speak in a dogmatic way 
or express some strongly held ideas that are foolish, they're often religious people. Um, he writes specifically Christianity. I think Christianity is one of the filthiest of today's uh, major monotheistic religions. Um, in fact, you know, in the last 24 hours, I had a, a great number of debates about Christianity with a good friend of mine. I was raised Baptist, and I've, I've read the Bible, and it's a good book. And often you'll hear Christians say things that are just outrageous. They'll say, often, this is how you know you're dealing with a, tr a liberal, not a Christian, but they claim to be a Christian. They'll say, oh, oh that's the Old Testament. Oh, well, you're saying God wrote, he, he you know, gave a message that was errant, and then he wrote a new book basically denying everything in the old book? Is that what you're telling me? You see, they like to use Jesus to fulfill whatever arguments they have. Oh, Jesus is love. Oh, is he? Did Jesus have no rules? Jesus had no standards. And, and would Jesus be like you if he came back today? Or would he be more like me? Because Jesus was counterculture. When he came into that society, he was one of the Jews that did not agree with how things were being run in that society. And that's why he was strung up like a common criminal. Crucifixion was the common punishment for criminals in the Roman Empire. And that's why he was strung up like that. So he's counterculture. He's against what is dominant, what is popular politically. And if you observe today, what is popular politically? The leftist ideology, the LGBTQ mafia, those are all things that are dominant. So if Jesus was to come back, surely he would be against those things. But anyways... He writes, uh, I was raised as a Christian and straight as I grew up. It gets like that. He writes, I'm 23 year, years old and I'm thinking about going back to the faith and trying to live righteously. There are many righteous Christians. For example, the Mennonites, the Quakers, the Amish. These are persons who have you know, various differences in doctrine, but they try to live a pure life. And I have a great deal of respect for them. And I've observed them you know, very closely. I remember when I used to spend summers among the Amish and Mennonites in rural Pennsylvania. There are two things that are of note. One, in those cold winters, I'd go for long bike rides, like 60-mile bike rides. It's very cold. I'd start extremely early in the morning. I'd wear a ski mask. So you got a black guy wearing a ski mask, riding a bicycle fast. And you know what? When I would see the Amish families on their buggies, horse-drawn carriages, you know what they would do to a black guy who was the only black guy for 100 miles? They'd wave and smile. Yes, the little Amish boys and girls, they'd wave and smile. Mom and dad would wave and smile at a black guy in a ski mask, even though there's no black people around. That's purity. huh? That's purity. Here's a second note that we need to remember, and we are going to create a campus, and I invite you all to come. The second thing that was of note, the Amish... They, of course, they're primarily rural peoples. They're farming peoples. They produce their own goods. They produce fantastic furniture. And they also make a lot of produce, you know, fresh fruits, vegetables, etc. And so they would set out a fruit stand on the sidewalk with fruits of many kind and also a cash box. And when they need to go do something, maybe they need to go have a church meeting or they need to go run an errand or they need to go into the, the house. You know what they do? They leave the fruit stand out with all of the goods and they leave the cash box out. They have a handwritten sign, strawberries, $3, blueberries, $4.50. That means that when you walk up to that stand, which has no cameras, no technology, no security, no people watching it, you walk up and it says, strawberries, $3. You're supposed to pull $3 out of your wallet, open the cash box, which has hundreds of dollars in it by now, put your $3 in that cash box, which is not locked, and close it. Take your strawberries and go on about your business. And it would not even cross your mind to steal. To steal the fruit, to steal the cash box, it would not cross your mind. And this is how they actually live. I've seen this with my entire, with my own eyes. I'm not saying I heard about this. I'm not saying I saw this on a YouTube video. I'm saying I lived among these people and I observed this firsthand. I was actually dating a Mennonite woman uh, for many years while I, that's, that's what landed me there. So that's a higher level of living. That's when you live among good people. We live among devils today and we compromise with evil. I don't compromise with evil. My, my good friend, it was hurting my heart to talk to him because I can tell that all of his education, all these liberals, they've gotten to his brain. 
Anyways, uh, yes, it is good to have faith and to have spirituality and to live righteously, and you should really try your best to be among those who are righteous and have the same understanding of Christianity that you do. I do not purport to be a, a Christian, or I don't publicly like to state that I'm a part of any religion, but I have you know, read through the religious texts and try to have a reasonable understanding of them, especially where they intersect. And I find consistently Christians will make every excuse to customize the Bible to this sick time that we live in. And uh, it's less common in Islam, but it does happen. Thank you for that question, and thank you to those who support the work. You can do so here on PayPal or by Cash App or Super Chat. I thank those of you who do support uh, meaningful content. In high school, so that's, you know, um, getting picked on and not being the pick of the litter, right? You know. What do you mean by that? Just by Okay, you. so she said she was getting picked on and she was not the pick of the litter, which is to say she was the bottom dweller. She was the uh, the kid that was picked last for the team. She was the least favored. And th that's fine. You know, someone has to be last, just like someone has to be first. But what we should understand is that what kind of personality does that develop in you when you were the girl who was picked on in elementary, middle school, and high school? What mentality and attitude does that develop in you when you feel like you were the one who was unwanted? You were the one who was put down? Well, well might put a little bit of negativity in you, maybe some hatred. And does that just disappear? Or does it swell up and now she's spewing it out in the form of Miss Andre? Huh? This is an, one of the reasons why I say I don't trust ugly people or broke people. And you might think it's a joke or it might sound uh, juvenile, but the truth is ugliness is deep. Ugliness has depth. It's not only your appearance, but ugliness is your attitude. Ugliness is your soul being black, you being black hearted. And when you have that in you, you're, you're going to eventually show that to the world. When there's no goodness within you or an insufficient amount of goodness within you, that will be that will surface and that's why you know one of her videos that put her on the show with this uh softy right here was a video called men something to the effect of men are not capable of love i mean this is just silliness it, it's clearly showing that she was hurt by men that's all it shows it doesn't show much else it shows that she's immature dishonest hateful you, you said you were yeah. Because, you know, I wasn't like, I wasn't like any of the other girls, right? You know, I was, I was an oddball out. I've always been an oddball out. Okay. I, li I lived the life that men. Listen, all she really needs to say is I was uglier than everyone else. And they used to make fun of me because I was dirty and ugly. And you know what? There's, you know, being ugly is not anyone's fault, but there's a higher level of ugliness you, you achieve when <laughs> The outside is ugly and the inside is ugly. We've all met people who are maybe not, uh, you know, the the most light on the eyes, but they have such a beautiful soul. You know, they they exceed. They they have a lot of kindness and they contribute. And for that, we value them. But this girl is ugly on the inside and ugly on the outside, and people treated her poorly. Now, do I think that it's a, a good quality of humankind to treat people poorly based on their appearance? No, I don't. I think that's a very low, immature, silly thing, and I don't engage in that, and I never have my entire life. You'll never hear one instance of someone saying, Marquette bullied me. Never. Conversely, you'll hear many instances of people saying, ah, I was about to get jumped. Marquette made them, like, Marquette stopped it. Ah, people were talking greasy about me. Ah, Marquette hopped in there, started talking greasy about everybody else. It was all settled. You know, in my experience in schooling, I exercised power where possible to stop people from being aggressors unduly. But in her case, she was always the victim. Now she wants to claim to be the leader. She was always the victim. She was always the weaker party. She's the, the ugly duckling, and she was treated as such. whine and complain that they live right oh when, when they ain't getting a deal that's i live that life right okay. you know and i've had to develop myself by myself right mm. so when it comes to hey um i'm willing to heal you right now dear like i will lay hands on you virtually and heal you i'm i would i will let you come on screen just let me know if you'd like to come on and have a conversation because you can be healed if you would submit yourself for healing 
you can be healed right now if you would only submit yourself for healing. So, um, and your name is Goodness Rated. Okay, curious. You don't have a profile photo, not at all surprised. Uh, but if you would submit yourself for healing, I'll drop the link. You can join on, and then we can go ahead and heal you. But um, to remain in the comments, in the shadows, making silly comments, uh, you just look like a fool. So uh, let that be your last comment if you're not going to come on. Let that be your last comment. Just watch in silence, which is fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with watching in silence. The overwhelming majority of persons, they watch in silence. Okay? Um, <laughs> Anyways, uh, Ibo Sosa writes, thank you for this assessment. This woman, like many people in these hypersensitive times, have turned their delusions into reality. That is correct. Well, yes, at some level, she has turned it into reality. He writes, if this continues to spread, this country shall crumble. In fact, the world shall, come, shall crumble because America is the hegemon and we dominate global culture. So where we go, everyone goes. Yes, that's right. You can go around the world, even to countries that are fairly isolated, like Iran, and you can find people listening to our ratchet black female rappers, and you can see the poison that is spread through those pieces of culture that are sent out, those commercialized pieces of culture. Shout to Rakeley. He writes... Thanks for answering and the insight. I found you on FNF and I've literally been binge watching all of your old live streams. I appreciate that. He writes, I want my future sons to at least be half the man you are. I, I really do appreciate that. And you know what? They should exceed me. And I trust that if you raise them up with good information, they certainly will exceed me because you know I had the unfortunate uh, experience and you can read about my experience in the black box and it'll certainly be inspiring for you as you pursue greatness but i had the unfortunate experience of being born in very extreme conditions and so i had a, a long distance to struggle out of so much of what i know i had to learn the hard way and to be able to hear someone wise speak sincerely on youtube or to be able to pick up a good book or to get guidance from a man uh, much of those today who would want to excel, they can. The road is clear. Uh, it was actually harder to come by knowledge uh, in the era I was growing up and from the extremes I came from. So I do expect all of those who would come after me and get to hear uh, my lessons to exceed me. I would be very thankful if they would all exceed me. Uh, by the way, shout out to the ballers. Baller alert. Carlos writes, peace to the saints, just wanting to support your work. Thank you very much. He writes, um, Saint, what would it take to come and speak to youth in Pittsburgh? I'm the attendance specialist at Propel Montour Elementary. Our boys could use your ism. Let me know how to contact you. Um, I can leave my email. Wow. You know what? I'm not going to lie. I try to stay out of uh, schools in general for a variety of reasons. And though I am a certified elementary school teacher, uh, one of the few persons on the internet teaching who's actually certified to teach, not only at the elementary level, I'm probably the only person who's ever gotten a check written from a proper institution. I've had check written from uh, top 20 institutions that have invited me to lecture. Uh, BA level as well as graduate level, business schools, and more. Um, so just, uh, you know, the, <laughs> I'm sure it, it can happen, uh, but um, well, we need to think about what would make sense. Anyways, uh, you can use the email address below. And I appreciate you uh, supporting and uh, believing and having faith. So thank you very much. That does mean a lot. a lot of what men are talking about. Um, by the way, notice when these broken women come into my chat, they never want to come on screen and have a conversation. I'm clearly a reasonable man. I'm a businessman. I mean, you know, look at me. I look like the reasonable person in Western society. This is what we look like, right? I'm wearing a handmade custom suit and a fine timepiece. Like you don't, you don't get to look like this while being a goofball or a psychopath, right? You know, you have to be able to afford looking like this. On the other hand, uh, you can go in your local uh, Walmart and, and see someone who looks like Princella, fake contacts, fake hair, fake 
eye eye lenses, fake everything. You can go in your local check cashing place. You can go in your local food for less. Uh, you can go in your local, uh, you know, fill in the blank and, and see someone that looks like Princella. You're really not going to see anybody that looks like me most places unless you're like in Monaco or something. You dig? Carrying on. I have very little sympathy for them because the same thing that they went through, I did. But I went through it probably a lot worse than they did. Mm. And I still came out on top. Right. See, that didn't even make logical sense. It shows you that she's a person filled with hatred. She said that I went through what most men go through. And so I have very little sympathy for them. Well, dear, that that doesn't make sense. Because usually when you have a shared experience with someone that increases empathy and understanding. So how can you say that you've went through what men go through? And as a result, you have no, no sympathy. That's not sensible. What are you, inhuman? And you also have to acknowledge that it's very strange that when she uh, says that men have no capacity for love, but everything she spews is hateful. Everything she spews is negative. She's a misandrist, yet accuses men of having no love in them. She is one who has had the love torn out of her. Some of my past experience um, allows me to have seen many persons like Princella. You know who is the greatest hater of men that you might not realize? Prostitutes. Oh, prostitutes. They hate men. Yes, they hate men. They've had so much bad experience, the bad experiences that led them into prostitution. And then once they were in prostitution, a whole host of additional bad experiences while working that very difficult job. So what Princella's mentality truly reminds me of is a jaded veteran prostitute who's been on the blade for 20 years past her prime. Yes, and she's seen too much and done too much and experienced too much. And now all that's left is darkness. That's what Princella reminds me of. Like she is a shell. She is not even a human being. She is a shell of a human being. There's no life in her eyes. I have the good fortune of, you know, seeing beautiful, lovely women every day, women who are warm and have warm hearts, and you're happy to see them and you look at them and just looking at them, it makes you want to smile. I have women around me that are so beautiful, like beauty that permeates all of who they are, that I look at them and it makes me soft-hearted. You see? I look at them and it makes me calmer, it makes me more peaceful. I have women that are, have such deep levels of beauty that it's hard to get mad at them. It's hard to make a mad face at them. You know, you just have to chuckle or laugh it off when they do things you don't quite, uh, you're, you're not quite pleased with. But Princella's bony Skeletor face and her dark black heart, you know, this is quite different. It, it's the opposite. Shout out to Isaiah, he writes, peace to the saints. I'm looking forward to our consultation Monday. As am I. Been a lot of consultations recently, and um, God willing, I've been extraordinarily busy. You would not believe. Um, I do need to post uh, that my consultation is going to go up in price, and I also need to, um, I probably should just increase the price because if I have time to post that it's going up in price, I also have time to increase the price. I'm probably just going to increase the price so I don't have to come back to it because I don't have a lot of time. Yes, yeah, so I, that, I will make sure that is the next thing that I do. That's what I expect out of men, right? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't the one, I, I didn't get a bunch of people hollering at me when I was, but I tell you what I did get, I did get a dope grown man. Now listen, listen how she never wants to tell the straight out truth. She wants to tippy toe around the truth. Huh? Yes. I, I'm going to decode this for you. See, I've been around a lot of liars. I've seen a lot of liars. Yes. That, that's what happens when you do business around the world. You get to see all of humankind. Just imagine if someone as provincial as Princella claiming to be a master of psychology when she scarcely left the, the podunk shitville town she grew up in. <laughs> Just imagine. Anyways, let me decode this for you. Her hatred for men. Let me decode this. Pay close attention. But I tell you what I did get. I did get a dope grown man. Ah, so listen, she said no one hollered at me, right? So she's saying no one was interested in me. They found me to be invisible. <laughs> I was completely unattractive. That's big. That's really sad. Because the same thing that they went through, I did. But I went you through it worse. probably a lot worse this. than they did. And I still came out on top. No, right. no you I did. And not with that wig, baby. You are not on top. You're wearing braces at four, in your 40s and you have a wig on. Uh, and your hairline is like way back here. You ain't came out on top. You ha you went through hell, but you look like you went through hell. You see, that's the problem. Carrying on. 
I expect that of men, right? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't the one, I, I didn't get a bunch of people hollering at me. when She I said, I didn't get a bunch of people hollering at me. When someone says you you get hollered at, that's a African American colloq or an African American uh, cultural phrase for you know men approaching you, men presenting themselves to you. So she said, I didn't get a lot of guys hollering at me, and I believe it. I think this is the one truthful thing she said. Ebo writes, love is an extreme passion and devotion to preserve a thing. If this is not the same as protection, is this not the same as protection? As therefore, how can men be incapable of love? Women, please don't listen to this griftus. Indeed. All right, here we go. But I tell you what I listen. did get. I did get a dope, grown man trying mm. to approach me as a 14 and 15-year-old man in their 30s. She said, I did get a lot of grown men trying to approach me, trying to approach me as a 14, 15-year-old. And let's decode it. If these grown men never did anything harmful to her, this would not be anything worthy of mentioning. Huh? But as they did do something, one or more of these grown men did do something to her as a minor, as a female minor, it is worth mentioning. As there is pain associated with it, we cannot say precisely what it is instead we allude to it why because the pain is so fresh still and so strong and it is so hurtful that we cannot speak to it directly huh that's what's going on here is in four days right that right that's a different topic altogether that yeah. you know, needs to be discussed but i'm sorry go ahead absolutely but the and here goes Goofy interrupting her when she's finally about to try to allude to something more meaningful. This is just the reality of life. You know what I mean? So. Um, oh, and now she's going on to something else. She states, this is just the reality of life. What is this? You being molested, you being taken advantage of. That is not the reality of life. That is a reality that occurred in your life. Uh, and the reason that reality occurred in your life is because you had bad parents. And this is precisely why I work so hard to build men strong, to be strong leaders of families, such that they can protect all of those who are under them, their woman, their children. You had a weak, incompetent father who was derelict in his duties. You had a mother who was the same. And you were victim and you blame rightfully your father, but you never realize your father is not all men. Your father is a man. Let everyone say amen. Carrying on. Then out of, out of high school, you know, right? I didn't, I didn't grow up in a good supportive family. I was Did I just say that? Thank you. Outcast in my family. Um, my grandmother used to put me and my brother out. We, she had eight grandkids and she used to put me and my brother outside. She wouldn't feed me and my brother. She'll lock us outside all day. It's not like her grandma was treated like those dogs. <laughs> my, my grandma didn't feed me. She just put us outside. Shout out to George supporting the work. Truly appreciate it. You know, the curious thing, and because she's a liar, she leave so many things unexplained. You see, if you ask a liar questions, the more questions you ask them, the more they're going to have to perform gymnastics and somersaults linguistically. And they're going to be caught up eventually, especially if it's someone like her of modest intelligence. What we should be asking her, uh, asking her right now is, okay, you mentioned your mother and your father earlier in this interview, which would suggest that you were raised by your mother and father. You even stated that you were a daughter of a military man. So in as much as that's the case, why does it matter if your grandmother put you out, as you would say, on occasion when most of your time should have been spent with your parents in their household? She kept my other cousins in the house. She would feed them, but she wouldn't feed me and my brother. Why is that? Because she didn't like my mom. Okay. Right? So we were the outcasts. Like, we guess you could say the black sheep, right? right. So... Uh, like my grandmother would fix a big pot of beans, right? Beans, yeah. right? Now, what in the weird country ass shit is it? My grandma would fix a big pot of beans. 
y'all were broke as fuck. Like, God damn, I thought I was broke. Um, cause you know, I remember times we didn't have enough money to get like a proper meal, but I like you said your grandma would fix a big pot of beans. Like, was that the main course? Like, god damn. Like, I thought I was broke. You hear me? When we was eating like hot dogs and potato chips, it was all I was like, God damn, this sucks. But y'all just your grandma just cooked up a big ass pot of beans. <laughs> Baby, I'm shut. Baby, we certain we. Baby, I got these baked beans. You just gonna have to <laughs> pour some more water in the beans. <laughs> I got these. I mean, this is strange. Uh, Lord, what? Listen, rice chicken and Hold all on. that. Like you could say, the black sheep, right? right. So, uh, like my grandmother would fix a big pot of beans, big right? Beans, yeah. rice, chicken, and all of that. I'd have right. been, she would tell me and my brother that it wasn't enough for us to eat. That me and him couldn't. Yo, you know you ugly when not only the little kids at school is making fun of you, you come home and your own grandmother's like, I hope you don't survive. I'm not going to feed you. Maybe you won't survive. God damn, you know you ugly. But the thing that I really need to know is like, whose grandma doesn't like them? Like, God damn damn like i'm not gonna lie to you i was not my grandmother's favorite because my grandmother favored my little cousin understandably so my little cousin was a girl and she was the youngest and she was sweet and cute and so she favored her. and i was a rugged boy so i get it I, that never bothered me um someone has to be favored now i'm not gonna make up stories that my grandmother locked me out of the goddamn house and wouldn't feed me beans you know, we keep seeing consistently that there's no explanation. She gives these statements that just make you say, like, how, Sway? It makes you say, why? But she doesn't explain, right? So it's like my grandma cook up a big pot of beans and then lock me outside, me and my brother. Why, though? Eat it. Mm -hmm. But other family members would come by, pick up their kids. They would eat seconds, first seconds. And then my grandmother would put the food up. Right. The same food that she said we couldn't eat because it wasn't enough. And mind you, this woman is a, a, a freaking nut, man. I mean, who, you know, you have to be a truly deranged woman to listen to her and A, find this to be interesting. This is extraordinarily boring. It's not instructive. It doesn't give you any skills, insights, strategies, inspiration, none of the above. You have to be a woman who is so deep in the victim mentality. You want to listen to her complain about being a victim and match up your stories with hers and say, oh, I'm not the only one. Well, yeah, you're not the only person who's delusional. Correct. You're not the only person who wants to be a victim so you can get attention. Correct. You're not the only person who likes to complain. Correct. Why do people like to complain? Because it gives them attention in the absence of doing something that is extraordinary. In the absence of being accomplished or having a skill or a talent, it allows people who are average or below average to get attention. Marquette, what do you mean? For example, tonight, I took my buddy to the Theo Vaughn show. He's a talented remarkably impressive comedian he has a talent and a skill so he gets attention and money for that now how else can someone get attention when they don't have the intellect wit and charms of a theo vaughn they complain and that is what low iq low skill people do they complain what do they complain about really anything racism uh the climate uh, macroeconomics the president politics race whatever they can complain about and then after the food got about seven days old, before she gave it to the dog, she would be like, Princella and my brother, y'all want this before I Wait, get it? Wait, is her real it? name Princella? That's crazy. Who would do that? That is some N-I-G-G-E-R. That is, who names a kid Princella? Wow, that's her actual name. Amazing. Amazing. Somebody remind me to make that Jesse Lee Peterson. Amazing make that a sound effect that's funny anyways um so this broad is telling tall tales yet again did shorty say once the food's seven days old right before they give it to the dog then they would offer it to me and my brother like you know that's like some that's a kind of evil to where you got to set a reminder in your iphone to even do that kind of evil so you're telling me her grandma was like all right i okay Oh, damn, that food's seven days old now. Okay, now, uh, hey, Princella, baby. Princella, baby. Baby, come on down. I got some food for you and your brother. Yes, I got some leftovers. Y'all gonna love it. Grab the seven days old food. It, like, come on. Like, I, I don't know if I believe this. Dog. Right. Right. So. Wow. That, 
So I, I, I lived an abused life. Right? There it is. Mm. She stated, I lived an abused life. And you know what? Among the multitude of lies she has spewed, this is one of the things I do believe. I do believe she has lived a life being abused. And the way that uh, she's been damaged emotionally, mentally, spiritually, it's she's been damaged beyond repair. And that's why it's so important for us to protect our girls and protect our women because an experienced man is wise. An experienced female is scarred, is damaged, is broken beyond repair. That's just all there is to it. And that's why so many of them are listening right now in angry silence. And they wouldn't come on for a conversation. They wouldn't come on for any healing because they don't want to be healed. They're holding on to their bags. They're holding on to their trauma. And they're going to die with it. That's why you cannot date them. That's why you cannot debate them. That's why they're not even honest onlookers onto a you know, when they look at the debate, they'll say something crazy like, he's emotional. It's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Like, your girl, she's the one interrupting constantly. She's the one laughing, like, hysterically when there's nothing funny. Like, she is the one that's clearly off a rocker. But they ignore all of that because they identify with that. And so they'll do anything and they'll say anything, lies, um, to make themselves feel better. That is their great effort to try to feel better. And that's the sad time that we're in. So I grew up pretty much by myself. I had to, I've lived on the streets, right? I've been abused. I've lived on the streets. I, I believe you, your face looks like you've lived on the streets. I'm not talking about your facial expression. I'm just talking about your face. It looks very skid row like you dig. Um, she looks rough. Now, when she said I've been abused, she said this many, many times, but notice she never really goes into the nature of the abuse. And, and I know the nature of the abuse. I can feel it, but I want her to say it. And I want, you know, the women who have experienced the same thing, I would say, go get therapy, except that therapists today are damn near worse than they've ever been. Therapy today is increasingly a pseudoscience. There are things that we know are mental illness. We're not calling mental illness anymore. We know self-mutilation is mental illness. Yet if someone were to cut off their penis, we just say that they're transitioning. No, that's mental illness. That's self-mutilation. That's self-harm. That's self-negation. That is mental illness. And we certainly know that the therapy profession is largely scamalicious in as much as how is it all the people I know who have started therapy never ended therapy? Like, good Lord, is this never going to end? You're just going to keep on billing hours? Is that what you're doing? Yes, it's a sad thing. I didn't have family support. Mm -hmm. So this person that you see right here, I created me. And when she says she was homeless, like, why? How? So I, like, were you living on the streets? Like, tell me a little bit more about what you mean when you say you were homeless living in the streets. And why'd you end up living in the streets? Who kicked you into the streets? And if men are so bad, why did your grandmother, who's a female, treat you poorly? Are you, are you not mad at females, too? You said your grandmother would starve you out and feed you dog food, essentially. Why aren't you mad at your grandmother? Oh, I know why. You're, mad at, you're not mad at your grandmother because your grandmother didn't make you suck her knob when you were a kid, right? The abuser did that to you. And that was wrong. We all know that was wrong. Uh, but you can't get over that. And, and honestly, if it were up to me, I would hunt all these people down and execute them. I truly believe that uh, people who are pedophiles should lose their lives. They should, because that is an evil thing to do to an innocent child. And I know that is what happened to you. I created me. Um, I, um, I didn't know what I was going to do because my mother wasn't supportive either. She wasn't supportive. Your mommy wasn't supportive. Now that's messed up because if your mom sucks, I mean, like, then you down bad. Like, uh, many people have issues with their father, but God, like, your mom was a dirtbag too. That's messed up. Uh, shout out to moms. My mom was just here. We had a great time. She made me a quilt. My mother made me a handmade quilt from scratch. She also made my brother a quilt. Very nice lady. Even though my brother doesn't contribute much, she still made him a quilt. That's the love of a mother. It's largely unconditional. So the point is that uh, mothers are important. Mothers are very intimate with their children, in, you know, in a positive you know, uh, platonic way. And uh, to have a bad mother is really an unfortunate thing. But again, she doesn't have the same level of hatred for males that she has, excuse me, for females that she has for males. And that's because her mother did not abuse her sexually. 
support of it all. And uh, so for about three years, I couldn't, I, I waited. I couldn't wait till my 18th birthday because I knew I was going to leave that situation. Now, her story is so goddamn jumbled. You told us that you were living on the streets. Now you're saying you couldn't wait till your 18th birthday. Well, if you're living on the streets, you're not under your parents' household, so you're completely free. So your 18th birthday is largely irrelevant. So why is it now you're talking about waiting for your 18th birthday in anticipation? So this is the kind of thing we have to wonder about because she's just so dishonest and unable to tell a coherent story about her past. Okay, that, uh, that camera went out as it often does. Give me one second. Give you guys some time to send in your comments, questions, tuition. Need one more extension cord here. <laughs> you guys would not believe um, how many extension cords we have here. <laughs> we, we got so many extension cords, lights. I mean, it, it's just, it's extraordinary. I got a, a light on the second floor shooting down. We got a lot going on. I'm going to go ahead and adjust my uh, mic right now. Not adjust my mic, adjust uh, my other camera since now we're switching cameras. Is going to make a quick note for myself to remember to bring a um, another extension cord from my nearby property over here. I acknowledge David. He writes, "Is this Princella the bean maker a biological female?" Bruh, it's questionable. Honestly, it is. Uh, something about her face seems off. Oh, I agree. The individual's brow looks very Neanderthal-like. He writes, fake to the bone. You ain't lying. I found the man and woman denim jacket, and I'm interested. Is that still available? Thank you. You are my inspiration. I appreciate that. And absolutely, that uh, is available. I had that one in white. Uh, white denim is, is super cold. Now, they run small, so I would size up. So I sized up to a large. You can also see the measurements on the website. So please do check out the measurements and also note that it runs small. Um, and the reason I say that is because we actually craft these garments when you order them because we try not to hold much inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, post the link for that one. You can get it at manandwomanbrand.com. You click shop all and you'll find that uh, denim jacket there. And thank you for that question. And thank you to all of those who like to support that particular brand. Man and Woman Brand is a brand that is based on the unity and the natural pairing of man and woman, which is something we must promote more in this day. And uh, I joined my I joined the military on my 18th birthday because I didn't know <clears throat> I didn't know what I was going to do. Nobody mm -hmm. was teaching me anything. I didn't know how I was going to function in the world. Right. Now, that's very strange. You claim to be this intellectual superpower who is writing essays for other people in high school and you were charging them money and they were somehow paying for these essay services, which does not happen at black schools and especially not in the poor rural South, which is where she was. And somehow you didn't know what to do. You didn't have any prospects. You didn't have college. You didn't have scholarships. So you say, I'm going to go into the army, which is indeed is like the catch all for people who might not have like really put together a plan or they're just, you know, young and 
need a little bit of time to figure things out. Maybe they lacked parental guidance. But that's not an option that would be sensible for someone as genius as Princella. That's how we know she's lying. Shout out to the ballers. Baller alert. Uh, the swarthy wizard writes, Peace of the Saints, baller alert. Usually females who come together in Choss, nine to, nine out of ten, they'll turn on each other like always. Okay. Carrying on. <laughs> Someone wrote, she really does have a cro magnon uh, brow. That was the the term I was actually looking for. Exactly. It's gross. And um, so I joined the military because I felt it was it was safer for me to go to the military and learn about life there as opposed to living on the streets and trying to figure it out in an ungoverned, uncontrolled, un Now think about the kind of liar she is. And I want you guys to consider she's making it out that she's a highly intelligent person. Remember that part. She's highly intelligent. She's very good academically. Remember that part. And she says that she's like studied this and learned this and she's such a quick learner. Now, she didn't mention anything really horrible in her upbringing. She didn't mention that like her parents were on drugs or one parent was in prison or, you know, anything really horrible. Uh, she didn't mention that she was living in a violent ghetto or anything like that. So I'm still trying to figure out why her upbringing was so bad. That hasn't been clarified, but she's so intelligent, but the best thing she can think to do is to go to the army um, after high school. Okay. So I was in a situation that was clearly worse than hers by all objective measures. And then after that, after uh, age 18, I was enrolled in university of California, Berkeley with largely no assistance, none at all from parents. Well, that's what a, a person of unusually high IQ is able to do. They're able to hustle their way up out of a bad situation into something that would be unexpected and is like really good going into the army, you know, the army, anyone can get into you know, the army is like having their doors open for all. In fact, the army in the last couple of years has had uh, not been meeting their recruitment numbers. You see, turns out that it's hard to get people to sign up to die. Um, so when you sign up to the army, you're basically volunteering to be sent all around this world to fight and potentially die for God knows what, certainly not American freedom. Um, so yeah, like the army will accept you and your sacrifice, potential sacrifice of your life. So you know, she's pre pretending to be a genius, but like, if we're being honest and there's no disrespect to anyone in the army, my brother's in the army, he's a tanker in the military and God bless all of our fighting men. Truly. Uh, I wish their lives were cherished as they should be, but, um, no genius goes into the army. That's not what geniuses do. So her portraying herself as a genius is just ludicrous. Anyone who believes that is clearly a fool. There's just no doubt about it. Uh, shout out to uh, the swarthy wizard writes chaos. I, I meant to say they come in that form and separates. Yes, I understand now. Thank you. And mind you, the military does provide a great uh, opportunity and a, a great, re even better retirement. So there are paths within the military, but you know, she's lying about her her genius because her path does not show the the mark of genius. Discipline world. I would rather go where there's some structure to help me figure out life. Mm -hmm. So I chose the military, right? Right. And I spent eight years in the army and I got my commission as an officer while I was in there. Right. Right. Why does she feel the need to say right after everything? Like, God damn, this just said what you got to say. <laughs> Shit. Shout out to Privy Landscaping comes uh, through again, supporting the work on Cash App. Truly appreciate it. And shout out to the men who stand up and pay what they owe. You are appreciated. Man, I also acknowledge Corey. He writes, I've been binge watching your channel. I'm new here. Well, everyone welcome him warmly to this thing of ours. We really do uh, appreciate all of the wise, intelligent, and good people who have assembled. Um, so thank you for being a part of this thing of ours. And so after that, right, I got she out. She didn't say right again. Like, bitch, just say what you got to say. This is like those black people that always go like, you know what I'm saying? Like, motherfucker, no. Just just talk. Like, goddamn, I'm not going to co-sign each individual sentence or noun phrase that you share. Just talk. 
And then I went to school. I got myself into college. And I studied. I got myself into college. <laughs> she says that like, you know, women will mention something that's extremely basic as though it's extraordinary. They'll say, I pay for all my own bills. Ah, every adult does that. They'll say things like, I got my own house, my own car. Ah, every adult has that. You know, they want to be acknowledged for the most fundamental things. And she is one such person for sure. But it's still the molecular biology. Here we go again with this one. How and can someone tell me how many times she's going to mention molecular cell biology without ever stating that she earned a degree in it? I repeat, how many times will she mention molecular cell biology without stating that she earned a degree in it? Huh? And I studied cell and molecular biology. I studied, not I earned a degree in it. Well, guess what, love? I also studied molecular cell biology as well as biomedical engineering. But do I keep on stating that I studied biomedical engineering? No. You know why? Because taking a course on something doesn't give me expertise in it. Not having a degree in it certainly makes me look like, uh, you know, I'm just pretending. But I tell you what, even if you had a BA in it, you would not be considered an expert at any level. So you don't even have a BA. So you're just a dimwit. So I have a science. And, and look at this, this, this goofy guy who's not even smart enough to say, oh, did you get a degree? So she keeps on, oh, I have a science background. No, you don't have a science background. Background. <laughs> say again. No, I'm right. I'm writing this down. Go ahead. Cellular molecular biology. Is that what you said? Yeah. Is this his first time hearing molecular cell biology? You know, we call it MCB at Johns Hopkins. MCB. It's very common. BME, biomedical engineering. These are very common terms in uh, medical education. So yes, you basically have one guy who's not very sharp talking to a broad who's maybe just a little sharper than he is. And so now she can, you know, she can tap dance around him. That's why she got obliterated when she was talking to me because I immediately I was like, oh, no, nope, no, nope, we got a faker. And I know she's fake because I've seen the real. Huh? The molecular biology. Okay. And uh, amongst the core curriculum was um, botany, organic chemistry, one and two. <laughs> she's really um, telling us the courses she took in community college. This is a copy. Let me adjust this camera. My girl said botany. Botany. Isn't that the study of plants? So she keeps on acting like her molecular cell biology courses that she took turn her into some sort of veritable genius uh, when you're now referencing these community college courses in the study of plants. Like, Lord, like, this, this is she's like one of those people who, you know, didn't complete high school. Then they went to jail and got a degree in, in jail. You know, they got a high school degree or a bachelor's degree in jail. And they're just so excited about feeling like they, they know something now. And they're using every new word that they've learned, even though it doesn't apply to the current conversation. Amazing. <laughs> Shout out to P. Crawley. I appreciate you supporting the work. Biochemistry, inorganic chemistry. Physics one and two, calculus, mm -hmm. gen genetics. I take I've taken all of those courses. But you didn't get a degree, you idiot. And those courses help shape my. Did she say genetics? There is no course on genetics. I promise you. I put my life down. She did not take a course in genetics. You might say, Mark, how do you know such a thing? Well, it turns out that I used to run a technology company that was specialized in the higher education industry. So one of the things we used to do is we would scrape online course catalogs. Yes, we would use a technology, a web scraper to scrape the course catalog and download all of the titles of the courses. 
You did not take a course in genetics. You might have taken a science course or a biology course that covered genetics, but you did not take a course in genetics because that would be too complex for someone on your low level. You're lying. Political mind. Right. To be able to observe data and draw conclusions, rational conclusions. So. It, you know, it pains me because I am also just like, maybe I'm turning into a white racist because I'm like, are black people stupid? Like Maybe they are. Because who would believe that she's smart? Like, you have to be legitimately dumb to believe she's smart. But she does have some broken white female fans, too. I, I've seen them. Well, I've, I have that in my arsenal as well. I'm professionally trained as a leader because of my commission in the military. Okay, hold on, time out. We left the education. So you did all this talking about education, but you have no degree. See, this is what you guys need to be mindful of. It's the dumb person who has no degree is going to go through and tell you all oh, the courses they've taken. But this fat guy in this vest, tacky as hell, looks like a, a goddamn employee at Sears. Um, this dude has not pushed back on anything she says. Shout out to Corey. He writes, always covering up her forehead insecurities indeed and you know the thing that really uh made me die laughing is that she had the nerve the nerve to insult the bald head lover she would you guys believe she called the bald head lover she called me milk dud head i think it was maybe it was milk dud or milk dud head i can't remember unfortunately but she had the nerve to insult the bald head lover and i said well here's one thing about the bald head lover, the bald head lover. I, I keep the baldy bald. Number one, show me some respect. It takes a lot of work. I have to shave every single day. That's number one. Number two, ah, I got the ski ball out. You heard me? I'm flossing it. I even got the bright lights on. So it shines. I'm not hiding. This is my natural look. Show me your hair. She wouldn't show it. <laughs> imagine, imagine being afraid to show that which you really are. Imagine. Um, I was also a top salesperson. Now, what kind of insecurity is this when she's been talking 20 minutes about how great she is? And here's the worst part. Everything she says about how great she is, is not that great, but still she's going on 20 minutes. Like these are the kind of, uh, resumes that if you were in the halls of power among people who are actually accomplished, they would listen to you and just be like looking at their spouse. Like, is this girl serious? Like, it's a like, word. Like word. Um, I remember I, you saying that. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I I excelled in all sales that I've ever done. Um, I sold over 120 cars uh, alone uh, by myself uh, in a year. She said, "I sold 120 cars alone by myself." Shout out to uh, King Modi. My here, where can I buy the watch? I want to reward myself for my accomplishments. You look outstanding, even better than some women. Men must look presentable in a real way. I appreciate it. Shout out to the bosses, you dig? And, uh, you know, a player could recognize a player, you dig? Uh, this fine time, it looked gold as hell, too loud. Jesus. That's what I be saying when I be seeing these turbo thick girls in Vegas in their Halloween outfits. Uh, but you can get this one at mdblabel.com and the money will not go to me. It'll go to someone just like you. It'll go to St. Flo's. And you know, these are the kind of things that we set people up with after they uh, do their consultation, which you can book at marquetism.com. These are the kind of opportunities that I provide in this real community, as opposed to people like Princella, when you say, well, what are you building? She says, I'm building mines. No, dear, you are trying to line your pockets. So mdblabel.com, I just dropped the link right there. Uh, shout out, and by the way, shout out to King Modi. He's a real one. I've also had the pleasure of speaking with him many times on consultations. Shout out to We The Engine just coming in to support the work, a real one. Carrying on. Oh, let me share the, <laughs> the lying fest. And within six months, I sold 75, right? Uh, because I was determined to get that General Motors ring. Wow. But I lived on the streets. 
I've been in abusive relationships. You name it, I've been through it. It ain't nothing that I ain't been through. Okay, so you say you've been in abusive relationships. So now you're speaking of that which you are doing as an adult. You also say that you sold 120 cars. Then you also added that you sold 75 cars. I don't know which one it is. Sounds like lies in either case. But strangely, you said you were also living on the streets. So you're telling me you're selling six million. Uh, nearly six million dollars in product but you're also homeless at the same time give me a break here dear really give me a break and then you've stated that you've been in multiple abusive relationships i could have sworn you called yourself active and powerful at the beginning of this live stream so you're so active and powerful you also refer to yourself as a genius so with all of this iq that you have all this intelligence and understanding of human psychology you end up in multiple abusive relationships. Oh, seems like you've fallen short based on what you claim to be. Let me unpack this for everyone. Why did she end up in abusive relationships? You see, what is it to be abused? To be abused is to be treated, treated less than, to be hurt, to be punished. That's what it is to be abused, right? Why would she submit herself to abuse? Because she has low self-esteem and she feels like she is less than. So to receive abuse subconsciously makes sense in her head. Uh, makes sense because she views herself as a low person and she's being treated as such in an abusive relationship. This is why I often tell you guys that sometimes you'll meet a woman and she'll self-sabotage. I experience this all the time. I meet a woman. I'm everything that they say that they've wanted. They want a man who's tall, good looking, in good physical shape, has humor, charm, someone that their mother or father would be proud for them to be with, someone who's you know, successful. Check all the boxes then they start doing stupid things such that i would leave them why because they secretly view themselves as a low person unworthy of a great man and so their subconscious programming takes over this similarly is a woman who would engage in self-sabotage she would refuse all of the decent opportunities from good men and she would instead opt for those men who would abuse her and basically verify that subconscious reality that is running on replay which is i'm not a good person i'm unworthy i deserve bad things i should be abused and where does she get that programming from she got that programming from the trauma that she experienced in her early childhood and that is why it's so hard to deal with it because it occurred so early in life that she doesn't remember much before it so it feels psychologically so embedded that it is indeed a part of her she has trouble understanding it explaining it acknowledging it analyzing it analyzing that pain so she just leaves it there where it is and now on top of that are layers and layers and layers of hatred from others for others but that hatred for others really comes from a root of hatred for the self Ladies and saints, that's probably the best psychological analysis you would hear. Matter of fact, somebody send her a bill. You heard me? I know she's listening. Send her my bill for my services. Shout out to Rakeley Swimming. He writes, up late working. I see you, Marquette. Same over here. Closing in on 48 hours straight. My brother, let me advise you to get some rest. Uh, I do want to refer you to the last section of Boss University where we talk about uh, self sustainability and self-care. I promise you, you don't want to crash. You want to keep going. It's a marathon. He writes, like my b-ball coach C. Knight said, players make plays. Peace and saints. Oh, indeed, it is true. It is true. And you can't say that you're a player unless you're really in that game. You dig. Shout to Deeply Gold supporting the work. Now, I also acknowledge uh, Glacier supporting the work. Right. And so I've been able to go through that and analyze my life and I've been able to analyze the circumstances the situations the people and I've been able to combine all of the information and the wisdom okay so here she is basically claiming that um she's a genius and she's able to understand everything even though she's lived a life in which she started to be the driver of her own trauma. She chose to get into relationships wherein she would be abused. You see, when you're a child, you're a victim of circumstance, maybe the family that you are born into. You don't get to choose many things. You don't get to pick your babysitter. You don't get to choose who protects you. A lot of things are fixed and beyond your influence. However, when you're an adult, you get to pick things. And clearly when she was an adult, she picked men who did abuse her. And so that is an indicator of a lack of something, a lack of emotional intelligence, a lack of psychological stability, self-worth, intelligence, and much else. And so it's strange for that same person who repeatedly got into abusive relationships to then turn around and purport to be a coach or a guide 
to others. Yes, there is certainly some goodness and we can be proud of those who recover, but would you rather learn sobriety? I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> Y'all can see that she's a clown. I'm not going to get into it. And that I've gathered through science curriculum, through sales, marketing, everything that I've ever done. And I've been able to piece it all together to come up with an entire picture of how this world works. Facts. So I'm naturally gifted in human behavior. Look at this dumb boy. This is like the fat Steph Curry that converted to Islam. This boy over here talking about facts. This broad hasn't spoken one fact. The only fact that she might speak is that you are a disgusting sack of male shit. You have not a muscle in sight. I have a strong feeling that you drink coffee every day. And if a fire alarm went off in that building, your fat ass would be out of breath by the time you got outside. Human psychology. Mm -hmm. I've always made straight A's. Uh, in you're lying. If you made straight A's, you would have went to a better university with a scholarship straight out of high school. You did not make straight A's always. That's a lie. No one makes straight A's in high school and then goes into the army. That's just not the case. Psychology in class. I've never had to really study. So I'm just gifted. And she just called herself gifted. Let's be real. Is she gifted? Come on. Does anyone actually believe this? Does she look gifted? Does she sound gifted? Does she speak English in the way that a gifted and talented person would speak it? No. She speaks like a provincial person who has not been schooled properly. Life was a training ground for me. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know how other people live their lives, but life is a school for me. And it has taught me. Shout out to people who are dim-witted and are convinced that they're geniuses. She says things that she thinks are so damn heavy. Like <laughs> she said this stuff, like it's just heavy. Like she just dropping game. It's amazing. Cause if I was in the studio, I'd be in the corner dying laughing off of some. Is this bitch serious? Like, come on, babe. For real though. She's like, I don't know how other people live their life. But I live my life every day smoking a whole pack of Newports. That's why my voice sounds like a 60-year-old black man. My voice sounds like a 60-year-old black man that spent most of his time at bingo with a bunch of change jangling in his pocket because I didn't smoke these damn Newports. So I don't know how everybody else lived their life, but I didn't live my life like it's a school. <laughs> you dumb. More than what any class could ever teach me. Right. Right. And so my philosophy and the way that I see you don't have a philosophy, love. You've bootlegged your radical feminist ideology from a white woman named Valerie Solanus. And you're, you're such a dimwit. And I see persons like you coming a mile away. Valerie Solanus's book is listed on my Amazon reading list because I want you all to understand the enemy. Yes, that's right. Amazon.com slash shop slash the saint in the center. And here's the thing. That book has been listed there since I put up my uh amazon book list huh I, I see these dummies coming a mile away they bootleg other people's thoughts they don't have their own thoughts when you hear marquettism you hear that three sentence bible that i created be yourself be good to yourself be good to good people it doesn't try to sound complex because the truth is simple uh, lies are complex. The truth is simple. And the, the parallel structure in the language makes it easy to understand, easy to remember. That is the genius of it. You have her, on the other hand, bootlegging the thoughts of some dim-witted uh, lesbian uh, psychopath who also, Valerie Solanus, she's a man-hater. Why? You look at her background. She was molested as a little girl. And that is documented in her own book. She was molested as a little girl. And this is the same thing that happened to, to um, this, uh, this one with the Neanderthal face. World comes from 25 years worth of a variety of experiences. But not only did I do I do all that stuff, you know. I play, <laughs> Shorty knows how to talk herself up. Play music, right? Mm -hmm. I, I play the piano, play a little bit of the drums. Um, I'm an artist. It's one ugly broad. I mean, Lord Jesus draw i do spoken word poetry i'm a rapper i can sing a little bit you're a loser bitch when you say that you're a rapper listen to me um unless you rap like lauren hill uh i don't want to hear that. that's like the most masculine uh thing you could possibly do shout out to uh mr gardner comes in by uh paypal he writes peace of the saints woke up in the middle of the night to live to a live stream i'm here for it in a real way 
man, I'm telling you, I'm outside and it was a much better thing to do to go deal with these flute than go deal with these flus. These, you know, my people, uh, they're at the club tonight. They got a table and, you know, bottles and all the rest of it. They're telling me to come through. I was like, ah, I can't do it, man. Like, that's not a good place for a guy like me. Um, by the way, shout out to, uh, David, he, uh, true to his word, he just got some drip at manandwomanbrand.com. He got the denim jacket and that's a cold piece. And, you know, shout out to the saints, uh, over in Europe. He's in a country that I was recently in a country I enjoy very much. Carrying on. Right. Uh, I recorded a CD. I have two CDs. Two you know, albums. you old as fuck when you ref when you're talking about CDs. I told you the bitch was old. She said, I recorded a CD. Bitch, don't nobody know what the fuck a CD is no more. Uh, listen to me. The fuck is a, like, no one has a compact disc drive on their computer, my girl. And ain't nobody got that in their car, my girl. So when you're over here talking about you done recorded a CD, your ass need to stop recording CDs because your ass is still living in the 80s, ho. I recorded. And some of my music plays at the beginning of my, um, of my shows. Right. I've dedicated my Why life. Why does she to talk so damn slowly? This is one of the reasons I don't like being around small brains because these dimwits, they speak slowly. And it's just like, I'm just sitting there like looking at my watch like, God damn, hurry up, slow brain. She's always saying, she, how are you talking slow and still saying, um, amazing. To personal development mm -hmm. and high and high achievement, right? High achievement. So I don't I don't waste time on planet Earth, right? All right is so. this guy an idiot? How are you an interviewer when all you say is right, right, facts, facts? Little fat idiot. That's that's practically me in a nutshell. So it sounds like you're like a, a Renaissance woman. Ah, that's funny you say that, my boy, because that's not a term. The term is Renaissance man. Yeah, the term is Renaissance man. We've never heard the term Renaissance woman. And how is she a Renaissance woman? The Renaissance from Europe. She's never even been to Europe. What are we talking about? Stop it. She's provincial. She's a peon and a peasant. Yes, I guess you can say. Based off what you're saying, you're very soft-spoken. You have a a voice and i know some people are like you're laying it on thick right now because i'm reading the comments i don't know if you're reading the comments ah <laughs> yeah the comments like this bitch bullshit this bitch bullshit i i like to interject from time to time mm -hmm. uh because i think people get the wrong idea shout out to this guy who has one of those fake uh voices like he's trying to add timber to his voice but it, it doesn't really sound quite right it sounds very throaty Gotta tell this young boy to like, bro, speak from the gut. You hear me? Like, like let it come from somewhere deeper. It's a very throaty voice. It's very unpleasant to listen to. Boy got a face and a body for radio, but got a voice for silence. About things, I see some people saying, "I'm gonna use this against you." What oh. you're telling, what you're telling me, I'm gonna use this against you. I don't know how. You know, I'm I'm here to learn about you, and I'm pretty sure I want my audience to learn about you as well. I don't bash anybody you know what i'm saying so whoever whoever's listening hopefully some people you had so do you because i'm in sales too right. and uh obviously thrown in this but nigga who sold you that outfit though who show who sold you this motherfucking mormon missionary outfit man who sold you this funeral director outfit bruh yeah that's what i need to know because that person's a great salesman sales you you have a background like me you have a military background Mm -hmm. and being military and i know some people can relate is uh that you tend to be stoic you know what i'm saying especially if you're not in a, and i was trying to... ebb and flow because right. you cannot have a cause without an effect there's always going to be effect if you introduce a stimuli to something a stimulus mm -hmm. to something that's listen always... how dumb she is now see you guys listen to her shit you think it makes sense listen i'm about to break this down watch this watch this giving and receiving you cannot have a cause without an effect there's she said you cannot have a cause without an effect okay you cannot have a cause without an effect the way she stated that linguistically it sounds backwards as though the effect is providing for the cause as opposed to the cause leading to an effect but either way it's a truism it's not worth stating it's obvious it's like the laws of physics, right? You know, an object in motion will remain in motion if something of 
you know, it, it's kind of very basic. And she says things that are basic to people who are educated. And she says it to the the ratchet whores of EBT. And, you know, they went to EBT University and they think like she's saying some deep shit. Always going to be effective. You introduce a stimuli to something, a stimulus mm -hmm. something. That's always going to be the case, no matter what. OK, so it's the same way we're giving and receiving. You cannot give without receiving something. Right. No, that's also a lie right there. She, she tried to apply an objective scientific law to a subjective social experience, which is to say, she said, you not you you cannot you cannot smoke new pat Newports every day and not sound like this. This dumb bitch said, you cannot give without receiving. Oh, that's bullshit. No, that's bullshit, babe. Uh, Because listen to me. I got this ratchet-ass Auntie Val, right? And you can read about this in my book, The Black Box, The Sister of My Mother. And ratchet-ass Auntie Val is a low-down, ghetto, crooked crackhead. And Auntie Val is a bloodsucker. You may have persons like this in your family, which is to say that if you give them something, you give them a gift, you give them your time, you give them your attention, you give them your service, you give them your money, you will get nothing back nothing but maybe heartache and headache so you give them something but you get nothing back it is not true that every time you give you receive this is a lie this is hopeful thinking this is what human beings wish the world was precisely why she should not be a preacher for she is a one who spreads lies and corruption among the youth huh it's, okay so all interactions operate that way right all interactions right. operate no that way. Wrong, so wrong actually in terms of sales sales is important because it is the application of human psychology in practice it's practice you know what i would have asked her i said damn you know what you seem to be a really good master of all things you know everything you know psychology you know sales you know humankind uh, what corporation have you founded, dear? With all of this extensive knowledge, are are you a millionaire? Have you have you made a million dollars for yourself? Have you done that? Oh no, no, you haven't. Oh, that's amazing. Have you created a corporation and hired a bunch of people, like given people jobs such that they could feed their family? Oh, oh no, you've not done that. Have you even done the basic thing of getting a college degree? Oh no, you haven't done that. So so you don't have the millions. You don't have a college degree. Like, well, what do you have other than a big ass fucking mouth? What do you have other than a big ass mouth? Come on now. Yes. Right. And the better you are at understanding the human mind, the better you can be at sales. Now, I wasn't a shysty salesman. I was an empathetic, compassionate, and personable salesman. Okay. Because I never focused on my commission. I genuinely was interested in solving people's problems please bitch stop it stop it you've never run a business you don't know shit if you listen everyone if you have not run a business you don't know shit about business i don't give a shit what you have to say if you have not run a business you don't know shit about business full stop i don't care what college you went to I don't care what bullshit seminar you watched. I don't care what job you had. If you have not run a business, you don't know shit about business. To listen to this hoe tell it, this bitch thinks she's Freud. She thinks she's Donald Trump. This bitch thinks she's everybody. Amazing. And people loved me. Okay. I, I did a variety of different sales. I did one of the most difficult forms of sales outside of cold calling. And what is that? Direct sales. Yeah. Walking and knocking on people's doors. Right. That's the lowest form of sales. She's basically saying she was a peon. You can get a outside sales position easily. It's generally commission wholly or commission based because they don't want to pay you because you're worth very little. So you'll take the job without a salary and without benefits. So she's an individual who's basically conceding that due to her low educational attainment and her poor presentation, she wasn't able to sell herself into a better job, right? Sell herself into a BD role, sell herself into something high level. 
And so instead, she took a low level job, which basically has you smiling and dialing. Primitive shit. Come on now. I was a top salesman on that. I was able to purchase a car, knocking on people's doors, selling them products. Right. She fucking said that shit like it was amazing. I was able to purchase a car by doing my job. Bitch, isn't that how everybody purchases a car? Doing their fucking job? This bitch is a man. I was able to purchase a car by doing my job. She be saying regular shit like it's amazing. I'm going to start doing that too. Like, like, you know what I did today? I put on my shoes. Then I tied my shoes. That's right. I tied my shoes after I put them on. Like, she be saying that shit like it's amazing. Nut ass bitch. So I have, when it comes to, there's a difference in being stoic and being Hello. customer oriented. Right. Because there's. It's so strange. You, you definitely are in the site, you know, the psychology realm in terms of that. So after the military, what was, what was your transition like after that? Oh, that was kind of rough. Okay. Okay. So. I joined the military to get away from. Look at how her eyes look crazy right now. He asked about the military. I mean, large this shit. This bitch look crazy as fuck right now. It's just spooky. I want to see this little bitch in the middle of the night. You hear me? I'm just trying to imagine. I just finished fucking on her. You hear me? I finished fucking on this bitch. And then I turn over and she looking at me like that. It's pitch black. It's dark. But somehow her eyes go on in the dark and shit. She look crazier than a motherfucker with the fake ass contact lenses in right now. Why are her eyes is crossed? Look like one eye is looking in one direction. The other eye is looking at Charleston White. What's going on here? <laughs> Let's see what kind of lie this whore is about to weave together right now. My toxic situation, right? Okay. To go to school. And um, during that time. Why you thinking so much? Damn, why you thinking so much you lying ass? Boy, it'd be taking you some time to think of your lies, shorty. You ain't got no kind of flow. You ain't got no motion. You ain't got no finesse with your lies, bitch. You need to watch Bill Clinton see how he string his shit together. Smooth as hell. Time, right? Being not By the way, her fans are idiots. I bet they all get cheated on constantly because if they believe her bullshit, they gonna believe anything a cold nigga say to them. Tyrone and Pookie tell them the craziest shit. Uh, look here, baby. Like, nah, I wasn't at no girl's house. See, what happened was I'm actually running for mayor of Atlanta. So I had to go down to the public library to print out my application for mayor. And once I print out my application for mayor, I didn't. I needed some whiteout. So then I went to this girl house to get some whiteout to white out because they had printed my initial and I don't want my initial on the ballot because you know how they say Donald J. Trump. I don't want people to think of Trump when they think of me. So I just wanted to go to her house to get this whiteout. And then after that, I had to fax. I, yeah, I know they still using fax machines. It's crazy. I had to fax my application for mayor in to the current mayor and she didn't have a fax machine. And I didn't I didn't. The reason I left with no underwear, the reason I'm wearing underwear right now is because the fax machine wasn't working, so I needed some thread to get it to work. So I had to take off my own boxers to fix them. So I just left my draws over there, and that's why I'm free balling right now. You feel me? These bitches will believe anything if they believe the shit this whole saying. Not having family and support, right? Mm -hmm. I was not my and my spirit was kind of gutted out, right? Yeah. Because as a human, Listen, you she said my spirit was gutted out. And that's precisely what I've said. This bitch has no soul. And this is very common. I've met women before that have no soul. Uh, hopefully you don't have the unfortunate experience of having to lay down with one of these hoes who have no soul. It get like that because every now and then they might be thick or very thin, which, you know, I like, you know, you know, show me some curves, baby, or be like Calvin Klein 90s model skinny. You dig? I take either one, uh, but just don't be in the middle. Okay. Just don't be in the middle. But anyways, this whole said her soul, her, she was gutted. That's correct. But what she doesn't mention is that that's her perpetual state of being. Huh? Need, you need bonding. You need right. support systems. This is a part of uh, the lower echelon of Maslow's hierarchy of human needs to be a full whole person. That's correct. 
So that's correct. I was good. At this motherfucker is a yes man. Matter of fact, he might not even be a man. This motherfucker looked like young and May. Is this ball lesbian? He might be. I wouldn't be surprised. Saints, I'll give you a little bit of time to send in your comments, questions as we wind down. Or well, if you want me to carry on, let me know. I, I, I might be down. Might be down. Ah, the live studio audience. We still, you know, we still getting everything uh, implemented. You dig? We got the the boxes and uh, black out the windows. I still need to buy some uh, things to cover the windows because we have about forty thousand dollars worth of equipment in here. <laughs> Boy, agree to everything. That man knows how to agree. He's a master of agreement. It out, right? And I was still trying to find my way. But how I got out of she Christian. inhale so deeply? Is this bitch in bad health? This bitch is always talking about, right? Like, bitch, quit breathing so fucking hard. Fucking bitch got lung cancer. She don't even know it. Hey, bitch, um, you got lung cancer, okay? Like, damn. Um, can you send me a thank you card for for alerting your ass? I probably shouldn't have told her. Uh, shout to Darius. He writes more quet. Uh, Halloween plans. Nah, bro. I don't have any Halloween plans. In, in fact, I just try to stay out of the way and stay low key when uh, you have uh, holidays like this where people like to you know over consume alcohol and uh, act up. You know, when I was driving to drop off my buddy at the uh, valet, they got a you know a table VIP uh, set up at a particular club tonight. And I wasn't going to participate. As I say, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people, be yourself. It wasn't me tonight. And so uh, when I went to go drop them off, there was a, a car accident. One car had the front of it you know, basically torn off and the airbags were fully deployed, which would indicate there was you know, a significant impact and now, we can only presume that that kind of an accident on a night like this is probably the result of alcohol. And so you'd be wise to be indoors, especially if you're a woman. So you, know, you need to value yourself. And th Vanity at 19 years old, right? And also, thank you very much for the support. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I know, you know very few people support. And I want you guys all to know, for those who do, you are appreciated, especially the members at patreon.com slash the saint in the center and i know you guys know i make every effort to give back to you all and so um, thank you for appreciating me and i want you to know i also appreciate you i, I exited that religion and um out of exiting that religion i started to go on a journey of to, to discover right and that's how i got into the conscious realm, right? Mm -hmm. And at this at this stage, I had someone whom I looked up to. See, this is not even an interview. It's like a monologue. This man has not questioned anything she says. Shout to JVR. He writes, carry on, big homie. So, yes, sir. He was a mentor at this time. He was a man, okay? Mm -hmm. And he, he was a man. Oh, your mentors are men. The people you admire most are men, but curiously, the people you hate most are also men. Huh, curious. Brought me into the conscious information, right? So I was given books written by Malachi York. Right. Um, Malachi York, was he the guy that caught that case for sexual abuse? Uh, somebody Google that, let me know. Um, shout out to Ishmael, right? Peace to the saints, appreciate you. Shout out to the lady saints as well. And shout out to those who really are within this thing of ours. You know, like the more... You know, the more you're into the assassin, you know, your ladies are into the assassin, your your parents are into the assassin, your siblings are into the assassin. Um, you know, we get to reinforce positive behaviors like exercising every day, eating healthy foods, avoiding alcoholism, avoiding caffeine and other drugs, living a pure, healthy life. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Um, but yeah, she said she got to Malachi. Your I, if I recall correctly, Brody is not kosher. Let me see, Malachi charges let me see ah uh, here we go now let me see this is why you guys got to mesh with your boy because your boy got knowledge peep it peep it 
Malachi York, 14 children testified against York. In 2004, a jury convicted him on 10 federal charges, including racketeering counts and transporting who? Children across state lines for what? Sexual purposes. Federal prosecutors claim that York molested. He did what? Molested and sexually abused. Did what? Sexually abused countless. How many countless children who were members of the new Wabian group? So she just referenced Malachi York as though he was some meaningful scholar. Let me rewind it so you can hear her say it again. And I want you guys to remember. Follow those who know, not those who pretend to know, those who really know. Gets me mad to see a demon like this spreading evil. I remind you that stupidity is evil. Ignorance is evil. And he brought me into, he was a man, okay? Mm -hmm. And he brought me into the conscious information right so i was given books written by malachi york written by malachi york i was given books written by malachi york now what is this name right here what is his name right here this name is malachi york so she just basically said she's pointing out where she got her knowledge from a pedophile a convicted a convicted pedophile child abuser Wow. Wow. Now, here's the problem with dealing with dimwits and the ignorant. She said that to the fat ball. This fat ball, what he, he do he do? Oh, yeah, right. Facts. Yeah. Does he challenge it? The five percenters. I've looked into all of those religions, Does right? He the nation of Islam. Does he challenge it? He and I no. had a falling out, right? And then of course, he and you had a falling out. You're dysfunctional. You're going to have a falling out with anyone that doesn't allow you to be center of attention, to regain some of those feelings you were seeking as a child that you never got because you were the ugly duckling. Huh? And I ended up meeting this guy who was in the nation of Islam, right? Okay. And Damn, she done met a lot of guys. How many brothers was she with? I don't want to know her body count. Lord Jesus, everybody done been in that raggedy rat trap. At this point, you know, I'm thinking that I'm learning some knowledge or whatever or whatever. And I found somebody that was uh, knowledgeable. Well, to make a long story short, he. Bitch, everything you say is a long story. This is not about to be short, but go ahead. And this chick who was also. Nation of Islam ran a hustle on me. I was 20, 21 years old, and they both took me for about forty thousand dollars. Bitch, you didn't have forty one thousand dollars with your lying ass using game. Right? Wait, hold on. I thought you were a genius. How does a genius get ripped off for forty thou wow? Forty thou wow that you didn't have with your lying ass. How your ass was homeless when you were selling cars. You already said that. So where'd you get this forty thousand dollars from when you were in your early twenties? You're a liar at a high level, you lying. Lord Jesus, you lying. But after all, you're a genius. And with all your understanding of psychology and philosophy and botany and molecular cell biology, we can't forget molecular cell biology. With all that understanding and study of humankind, you still got ripped off by two random ass people. Amazing. So I've been gained. The best way to learn game is to lose right you got to take l's before you could take some wins. absolutely most folks don't realize that they think like mr agreeable absolutely <laughs> absolutely get this nigga a t-shirt absolutely <laughs> nah bitch um you ain't got to take every l to figure out something's bad like for example ah, I, I use my eyes i could tell smoking cigarettes smells bad ah you sound bad ah it, it's no good i'm gonna stay away i don't need to take that l i can watch you check this out little dumb bitch let me teach you something you don't need to take every l a wise person can learn vicariously a wise person can look and learn they don't need to be in the experience you see they say great minds think alike but i like to say greater minds think the same thing faster you hear me this broad is a dimwit 
is perfect and you just supposed to win. And and men have a jacked up uh, idealistic view about women as if women just take W's, W's, W's. She's supposed to come out the womb just taking all W's. Nobody take an L. Baby, you cannot master Baby. any game. Without. Baby, I feel like this bitch is about to start rapping like Pimp C and Bun B. Baby, baby, I'm a Southern Triller. I'm a Southern Triller. Yeah, making money. Pimp C, big pimping, and B U M B. <laughs> what this bitch like, baby? I feel like this bitch about to lay a mixtape down. The fuck? I losing. Right. And the ones who lose, and they go back and they rewatch the tapes. See, that's what they do, in right. Fact, right? Ain't that's what the, ain't that's what the team do? Absolutely. They go back. Ain't that's what the teams do? Ain't this what the teams do, baby? <laughs> Bitch, you sound so fucking stupid. It's amazing. How dumb is female kind that they listen to this ratchet raggedy hoe and they listen to her cro magnon Neanderthal face having ass, her hair had it hooligan detachable wig having ass her constantly wearing a headband to cover her forehead having ass her fake contact but hate white people while wearing contact lenses to mimic white people having ass they listen to her self-hating delusional low iq ass and somehow think that she's smart come on now unreal that's how you're supposed to do. Absolutely. I went back. That's how you're supposed to do. I, I'm damn near feeling like a white racist right now. I got to stop this shit. Like. But look, here's the thing that get me mad. Get me mad is that this is a misrepresentation. I mean, like black people are not this dumb, are they? <laughs> you, you, you said to this fat dude, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Tapes. Yeah, I took some L's. I'm not going to sit up here and act like Hank. Bitch, we know you took some L's. Your face looked like your ass was beaten to death in a Somali prison, but somehow came back to life. You took yeah. no L's. Right. And if you do act like you took an L, you was alive from the pits of hell. Facts. Facts. Right? Yeah, I took some strong L's. <laughs> Yo, I believe it. This bitch said, yeah, I took some strong L's. Bitch, I believe you. I will not object to that. Bitch, you took some tremendously strong L's. Listen to me. When a motherfucker look at me, man, they can't even believe the shit I be telling them, man. When they look at me, I'm like, nah, man, I'm from the gutter. They be like, no, no, no. You you had to have been born with a silver spoon, maybe a gold spoon. I'm like, nah, nah, man. I'm really from the gutter. Believe it. It's true. They can't believe it because I look so damn good. But when I look at this bitch right here and she say she didn't take some L's, I'm like, you know what? I am a believer. You have taken some motherfucking L's. Matter of fact, you're still taking L's to this day as evidenced by that motherfucking gap in the side of your teeth at this late age in a developed country. The bitch got third world teeth. She got developing country mouth. How in the fuck do you do that in this day and age? I want somebody to take up a collection plate. Take up a collection for the sister's grill because her teeth look like she was born in Haiti. Her teeth look like she belonged to Central Africa Republic. Her teeth look like UNICEF needs to sponsor her. Her teeth do not look like she grew up in the land of opportunity. Her teeth look like she needs an opportunity to go to the orthodentist. Her teeth look like her parents did not care about her. Her teeth look like we need to take care of this child. Ah. Anyways, carrying on. I'm sorry. I'm carrying on. One hit me for 40. Right? <laughs> and that really... That really put a dent because it took my credit score from a seven. This bitch lying like a motherfucker. Did she claim that losing cash took her credit score down? Now, anybody who has experience on a place called the planet Earth knows she's a motherfucking lie. Your credit score is not adversely impacted by you losing cash. You lying rat hoe. Now, moreover, shout out to Ishmael. He sends in by a cash app, right? It's hilarious. Truly appreciate it. Thank you to the real ones supporting the work. For those who seem to have forgot, you can support right there um, if you take a look. Now, this bitch is lying. To a 430. Whoa, mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. She said her credit score was a 430. Goddamn, I thought that was a meeting time for an early dinner. 
430. I didn't even know that shit was possible. Do credit scores go that low? That is some black shit. Holy moly. She's increasing racism right now. She's living out stereotypes. Said her credit score was a 430. I don't even think your ass could buy a cup of noodles with that kind of a credit score. That's amazing. Your ass is a cold liar though, bitch. You have a credit score of 430 from not paying your bills, from reneging, for being dishonest with creditors. Yo ass ain't got a credit score of 430 because somebody fleece you for 40 thou while cash. Nah, you's a big liar, but I appreciate you putting out your business because we always knew you was a low down conniving animal. No one's credit score gets that low without you being irresponsible. Matter of fact, without being remarkably irresponsible for 30 kind of shit. I didn't even know that was possible. Call up Guinness World Records. This bitch has the lowest credit score this side of the Mississippi. That's insane. 430. God damn. By the way, shout out to Cobra writes, uh, you're definitely this era's Goldie. Respect you, top dog. In a real way. And the crazy thing is Goldie was a fictional character. I'm the real deal. That's why I say I'm the idol of James Bond, you dig? If he was a real man, he'd want to be me. Carrying on. He ended up putting a, a repo repo vehicle on my, my credit. He oh, so your car got repo. Now, I remember just a little, little while ago, you were stating that you're like i i met i bought me a car i bought me a car from selling dough to dough right right i bought me a car from selling dough to dough you know i would in between the doughs i would smoke newports so i sound like this but i bought me a car from selling dough to dough right so now we know that car got repoed oh the truth coming out slowly but surely let this bitch talk she's just gonna expose everything good lord the vehicle and I took the hit for it, right? Right. And I'm getting some knowledge, Nation of Islam, conscious community, right? That's why you looking, right. looking so at ugly ass lips. Had, bitch, just tell the story. Fake ass LO Cool J ass bitch. I had to charge that to the game and I had to keep it pushing. <laughs> but who can respect someone as their self help guru who talks like that? She talked like a nigga on the corner. And I hate to say nigga, but that's what she sounds like. You know, I just had to charge that to the game and keep it pushing. If every hood nigga ain't used this phraseology at some point, this bitch said, nah, I had to just charge it to the game and keep it pushing. What the fuck are you talking about? And shout out to black people who use phrases that don't mean shit. You know, something bad happened to a nigga. Nigga say, man, it just is what it is. Motherfucker, what else could it be other than what it is? Why don't you shut the fuck up and pay attention to the world and you might be able to figure some of this shit out instead of using dumb phrases like, well, it is what it is. Nigga, we know it is what it is. It can't be anything other than what it is. Why don't you say something that's meaningful and makes sense instead of just saying shit, okay? Anyways, shout out to Anthony. Comes in by a cash app, writes, peace to the saints. In a real way, peace to the saints. That bitch, hilarious. She getting funnier by the minute. I ended up, I ended up almost being on the streets, right? Mm. Bitch, how many times you been on them streets? Matter of fact, you for the streets. This bitch stay in the streets like a crosswalk, man. Yes, indeedy. Because he took a lot of money from me. This was after the army, right? <laughs> that bitch sound like she was getting pimped out. He took a lot of money from me. Bitch didn't emphasize that. He took a lot of money from me. Bitch, you, right. you didn't have a lot of money. How he take a lot of money when you ain't have a lot of money? That's the magical part I'm trying to figure out. This was this was while I was in it. While you was in it, okay. While I was in it, All right? And you heard that uh, big ass fucking inhale. This bitch breathes like a fat nigga. How you a little ass broad? You breathe like a whole fat man. I think it's it gives her time to think of new lies. <laughs> bitch be like, <sighs> bitch be inhaling her lies. Listen to this shit. Listen to this. I was breath. in it. While you was in it. Okay. While I was in Listen it. Right. No. And uh got I had asthma. This bitch got a pacemaker or some shit. The fuck is wrong with this handicap ass bitch? To get a roommate. To kind of help. How your ass 40 with a roommate? What kind of shit is this? this? This you didn't get enough of having a roommate being in the goddamn army? This bitch 80 years old with a roommate. The hell? Right. And this roommate, this roommate wanted to do a business, right? Here we go. A lot of <laughs> a lot of guys yeah. need women to help them with a vision. 
stop it. <laughs> you stop it. You stop it right now, okay? Listen, are you about to tell us how you got scammed again, <laughs> you genius? Come on, tell us. Yeah. Right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So trying to go along with message to the black man and being a submissive woman trying to help a nigga out. Right. 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 What kind of broad is this? Did she say trying to help a nigga out? That's offensive. I'm. <laughs> man, can y'all clean up your language? I mean, listen. You see, I'm not getting into it, man. Just, just listen to this broad, man. I start putting a business plan together for this guy doing all, all oh you did everything did you okay you put the business plan together for him okay carry on genius all of that mm. guess what happened he started getting jealous of me because he felt that he started getting jealous of me because my voice was deeper than his b and i told him look nigga my voice is deeper than yours b but i want you to know this niggas die every day b niggas die every day b so you get jealous? Listen, listen, I was in the army. I wasn't in jail. I never been to jail, but I was in the army. I'll fuck you in the ass. Fuck you in the ass, B. Okay. What I was doing. Look, B, they call me the queen maker. I make you a queen, B. I make you a queen, B. Shout out to Lil Kim. When shined negatively on his own self-image. And he started getting jealous and Bitch, ain't nobody jealous of you 80 years old wearing braces and shit like i ain't seen these braces since i saw like a fucking white girl in the third grade what the fuck are you doing bitch don't you know what invisalign is can somebody welcome this bitch into 2023 how the fuck are you still wearing metal braces and shit that's some shit i would expect to see in peru or some shit in nicaragua what in the fuck you doing in america wearing metal braces and shit kind of don't she know metal braces went out in 20 in, in, in 2008 and shit what this bitch still listening to cds and shit this bitch is still motherfucking she ain't even heard of electric cars and shit why does bitch live in the past why she talk like martin luther king and what is going on here aggressive because i was putting all this stuff and he felt like he needed me too much mm -hmm. so he felt like he needed to humble me so he would get into an argument. He wanted to argue with me, and I'm not the person that's going to argue with him. But I walk away from arguments. Let me tell you something. Men don't like that. Men want to be the ones to... Bitch, you lying. Don't nobody want to argue with your dumb ass. <laughs> you lie like a motherfucker. Ain't nobody trying to argue. Shut your ass up. Cut the stuff short, because they want to keep their ego intact and say that I'm the one that did it. They don't like when a woman walk away from them. So... That's been you're, you're not away. a woman though go ahead wait and i went and locked myself in the room he broke that's some that's some female shit though i went i went away and i locked myself in the room it's like he was banging on the door and i was in there i i called my girlfriend i got my bestie on the phone do you like hear him banging on the door in the background like bitch you's a loser ass bitch look in my room and he choked me and pushed me up against the wall. And it was really loud. It's not and the people upstairs it's not called funny. the police it's not funny. and asked me, was I going to not funny. It's not. Right. Mm -hmm. this, this, is, this is all in my early 20s. No, it's right. not funny. Right. All in my early 20s. Right. We all take L's and we all, and we all learn. But you better go back and watch funny. the tape. Listen, um, is it not funny at all? <laughs> Yo, that's not funny at all it's not funny all i'm saying is bitch was sounding cocky as hell she's like yeah men men don't like <laughs> listen to me b right men don't like to men don't like for you to walk away from them when you are arguing b so this nigga was trying to argue with me b so i walked away i locked myself in the bathroom b then he started banging on the door b Men don't like for you to walk away. He break the door down, B. He start beating my ass. B. Like, shit sounded real fly till she got to that he beat my ass part. This is not funny, though, at all. She did not deserve. Well, maybe she did deserve that because peep game. 
according to Prince Fella earlier, work with me, work with me here. Earlier, she stated this. She said, for every cause, there's an effect, right? So it seems like she caused herself to get her ass whooped. Okay, carrying on. Makes sense now. We're good. Right. So we ended up moving because I couldn't afford that place no more because the other guy did what he did to me. Damn, you broke bitch. <laughs> she said we end up moving because I couldn't afford that place anymore. But you told me you sold 120 cars in one year. You sold $6 million worth of cars in one year, you said. How you can't afford a place to live. And you're a genius creating business plans, but you've never created a business. Amazing. Woman, a guy and a woman, right? Under the guise of polygyny, right? Right? Okay. okay. Islam, right? Okay. Okay. Right? All right. Which ain't nothing but a hustle when you got the man trying to run that. Okay. Uh, so he tried to put his hands on me again. Wait, head. did he try or did he actually put them on you? Let's see. So I was like, look, I'm not going to deal with this. So I called my yes. commander at the time. And I say, look, I'm in an abusive situation and I got to get out of this. I'm in an abusive situation. I got to get out of this. Why did bitch talk like she's a, a motherfucking Western desperado, right? Like she talk about a nigga that's just like, you know, just so you know, when you like take 10 paces and draw, you just smoke you a nigga. She talked like Clint Eastwood mixed with like Clint Eastwood mixed with somebody who smokes a lot of Newports incessantly, a chain smoking motherfucker. Anyways, carrying on. And why are you calling a man to save you? I thought you're like the powerful print king queen maker. I thought you're the powerful queen maker. You're calling a man to save you. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to verify and vouch for me that I'm gonna have some PCS orders because this property manager ain't gonna let me out of the apartment. Ah, you, so you called a man to ask for a favor, basically to create a lie so that you could renege on your financial obligation, which makes more sense as to why you had a credit score of 430, which none of us even knew was fucking possible. Amazing. Some PCS orders. Mm -hmm. She don't want me to leave, but I got to leave this. And he was like, after I told him the situation, I did leave. I, 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 he said, I would, um, I vouch for you. Now tell the people for the, who, those who don't know what PCS orders are. No, that, but the woman wouldn't let me out of the rental agreement because he was he was in there like me. Mm. So she had an attitude. Can, now I'm can he just ask her like, why is it that you're not in the fourth grade but you're wearing metal braces but you're not in the fourth grade? Why? Can he just ask her that one time real quick? Just for me though. Well, I'm the one. I'm the one really paying most of the, paying most of the rent. He helping a little bit, right. but you know, but he thought he was going to put his hands on me. I guess you think, hey, did he think he was going to put his hands on you or did he put his hands on you? I'm just curious. Did he think he was, or did he actually do it? Cause it sound like he did that. The seller is too weak to stay, man. I'm not finna put up with nothing. I don't give a damn what this Whoa, is. Whoa, don't say you're not finna pull up with that because you yourself admitted that you were in multiple abusive relationships and you were the one who chose that, okay? So don't start telling lies now. Which it is. Right. Don't nothing matter more than my life and my mental health. Well, right. you didn't take no because your mental health ain't there. Not that military career, not nothing. Not So he said he would vouch for me so i went and falsified some paperwork mm -hmm. up yeah. up up you went and falsified government paperwork ah okay so you've went from being a person who can't maintain their physical uh, obligations you have a 430 credit score you're incessantly homeless you're selecting, you're self-selecting into a physically abusive relationships, and now you're falsifying government documents. This bitch needs to be on trial with Trump. Put this bitch on trial with Trump. Lock her up. She falsifying government documents, which would make her a scammer and a fraudster. That's what that would make her. I wouldn't trust her. 
If this bitch a lie to the U.S. government, she a lie to your dumb black ass. Believe that. Come on now. I falsified some paperwork. And after falsifying the paperwork, I gave it to her with the confidence that my commander was going to. Bitch, stop blaming other people. You falsified some documents. I want to hear all this other shit. Go ahead. Ouch. Correct. Isn't it? it was me that made a right? mistake. Right? Mm hmm I did everything right except I put the wrong information down at the bottom. You <laughs> did everything right. Like you're laughing and you guys are smiling about trying to commit fraud. That shit is funny out here. You got busted for fraud and this shit is funny right now. Let me enlarge these devil's faces. Look at this. These are the faces of evil right here. How you laugh at your own failure. You're an idiot. I put my, I, I forgot to change my battalion commander information. Mm. Put my company commander information. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a genius though, Princella. Shout out to Zachary writes, buenos dias, big homie. Have a blessed day. I appreciate that. I'm wishing you a blessed day as well. Thank you very much for that. I take that to heart. And so he knew that I was trying to leave and he wasn't going to be able to afford that place by himself. He was aware of it. So commander. he called my battalion commander. Because okay. remember, I, I put the I put the commander was going. Ouch. Okay. Right. But I messed around instead of putting my company commander, my commission out. Yeah. That worked out into my benefit. You know why? Because they was going to try to court martial me anyway. That worked out. Found out that I falsified some documents and I was forced to resign my commission. Oh, you were forced to resign your commission. Now, you know what's strange about this? And I want you guys all to take note. When Princella was on trying to debate the big homie, the saint in the center, she was singing all of her praises, singing her own praises, right? She ain't got an award for shit, but she sure do not award herself, doesn't she? She was like, I was a, an officer in the military. Bitch, you ain't mentioned that your ass got motherfucking kicked out that bitch. You didn't mention that you were about to be court-martialed. You didn't mention that you're defrauding the military by falsifying documents. You ain't mentioned none of that shit, but you sure as hell did mention that. I was an officer in the military. Bitch, you was kicked out the military. That's a critical piece to mention. What's up? Ooh, I like that red sparkle. 